Hello and welcome. This is Cheryl. Thank you so much for stopping by. I know it's a busy time of year right now, but I wanted to get a little bit creative using supplies that I already have and scraps left over from previous makes from Christmas and create some gift tags. So the first step, I'm taking some heavy mixed media paper and I'm going to create a shimmery background. I'm gonna use a couple different sprays here, just spraying the whole background. And then I have some mica sprays that I made with Perfect Pearls that I'm going to use to add a little bit of shimmer to those backgrounds. I'm just shaking them up a little bit to make sure that the mica um, is mixed throughout the water rather than settled at the bottom of the little spray thing. I'm using some Perfect Pearl Spray, some Gold Spray, and then I have one that's kind of like a minty blue. The sprays that I'm using are Speckled Egg, and then the one that I'm splattering here is Uncharted Mariner. I really like the color of this blue, but I don't want it to overtake it. I don't want it to make the tags too dark. So I'm just speckling it a little bit, and then I'm spraying it with water and just moving it around a little bit just to disperse those ink colors. Once I have a good coverage over the whole piece of paper. I'm just gonna go about doing other things and let it completely dry before we move on to the next step. This is one of those projects that's really good to get a little tiny bits of creative time amongst all the busyness of the season. So I've taken my piece of cardstock, I've cut it down to um, pieces that are two and an eighth by two and three quarters. The first two tags I'm going to make, I'm just going to use some texture paste here and I'm going to use a stencil snowflake and I'm just putting that texture paste through the stencil. I'm doing it around the edges of the tag. I want to make sure that I have some spots on the center of the tag to put my to and from and that sort of thing but I do want to have them a little bit more decorative than plain. Now I created that shimmery background. You could just use regular cardstock, cardstock scraps. You don't actually have to create a shimmery background, but I just wanted something that was a little bit sparkly. Once I have my texture paste through the snowflake stencils, what I'm going to do while the texture paste is still wet is I'm going to put some um, glitter, sparkly glitter on top of it to make those snowflakes sparkle. And then I'm gonna set them aside to completely dry. Now I realized after the fact that I didn't put my little make them a tag shape, they were still a rectangle. So this is how I do it. I cut the corner off of one side and then I take that corner and I flip it over and match it to the other side and that way I get two even corners. The other thing you could do is use a die. Um, I have a die on order, it just hasn't arrived yet so we're improvising. For my next tag I'm going to take a greenery stamp and I'm going to stamp and emboss it with gold. So I've taken an embossing pad to stamp the image when I pour my gold embossing powder on it, it's going to stick to anywhere that that ink is. If there's powder anywhere that you don't want it to be, just use a thin brush, a nice fine brush, and brush it off. You wanna brush it off before you use your heat tool to melt it. So next, I'm using an embossing gun to heat that powder, and it's really easy to sell when it's done. It goes from being like a dull granular gold to a shiny, glossy gold and it's kind of a fun wow factor to watch it happen. Once your heat gun is warmer, it goes a lot faster. The beginning, it takes a little while. So I'm taking some Perfect Pearls, and these are a mica powder that has a binding agent in them that is activated by water. So I'm taking some water and a little bit of powder and making my own shimmer paint with them. Right now, I'm using just the lid of the powder you could put it on a little piece of plastic and use that as your paint palette instead. Once I'm done painting, I will put my um, jars over to the side and let them completely dry before I close my jar. So just make sure that you have a, space, a safe space to be able to do that before putting your water in the lid. You don't want to be closing your lid while that water is still liquid in there. You wanna make sure that it's dry first. So the first thing I did was my gold berries and I'm taking my brush, squeezing it onto some paper towel to dry it. The brush that I'm using has water right in the handle, which makes it really, really handy for doing watercolor. I tend to be a little bit of a klutz, so if I had a bottle of water or a jar of water on my desk, chances are I would knock it over and spill it and ruin a few things. So this brush is very, very handy. Um, it keeps everything compact and I don't have to worry about an open jar of water at my desk. So the next color that I did is green and I'm just doing all the leaves here. You could do this for any image. What I like about using the Perfect Pearls is it creates a beautiful shimmery effect. The more water you use, the more transparent the shimmery paint is gonna be. The less water, the more opaque and thick the paint will be. So I've got those watercolored branches set aside to dry. 
my last tags here, I'm just using some greenery bits that I have from a previous project. There's a full video on here on creating a card with different die cuts using or and giving them texture and dimension. And these are all bits that I have left over because when I do projects like that, I tend to do a ton of pieces ahead of time. And then it makes it really, really easy when I'm putting things together. So these are just leftovers. So it's a really great way to use up your leftovers, give them a second life and also give it as a gift. So I take my Distress Collage Medium and I just put my glue on the stem part of the die cut. I don't do it on the entire part. I like having bits that stick out. I like having the texture that it creates. This Distress Collage Medium dries completely matte and it dries completely clear. So if any glue happens to drop on an area, once it's dry, you're never gonna know that it was there. So it is my preferred glue for doing this technique. And of course, this, these tags are done during the Christmas season, so they've got a Christmas or wintry theme to them. You can do these tags in whatever theme you want. You can do them throughout the year. And it's a great way to use up just little bits and little scraps from previous projects, give them another use, and also have just little pockets of playtime. I like how doing little gift tags are just a small project, so you get time to do creative things, be creative, but it's not a large, daunting project. These die cuts here, you'll notice some of the times I'm ripping them apart. If you have a piece that's a little bit too big, it's super easy to just rip it apart. You could snip it apart with a scissors if you prefer, but you never tend to see where it's taken off. And it's a great way to make the die cuts smaller and have them fit into your project a little bit better. For these arrangements, I typically like to have a focal point. On that first card, I put a point set of die cut that I had. I didn't have a second one already cut, so I'm taking this um, sentiment banner that I had created for another card that I ended up not using, and I'm just putting that in the center to hide those stems from the clusters of greenery. If you need to, you can put an acrylic block on the top of it to hold it down while it dries. Once everything is dry, first thing I'm gonna do is make those corners for the tag for those two snowflake ones I did at the beginning. Super easy to do just layering the ones that are down on top of it and then snipping those corners off. And then the next thing I'm going to do is stack them all up together and then I'm taking my crop dial and I'm going to cut a hole or punch a hole into the top. The crop dial is great because you can punch through thick layers. You can even do chipboard and metal with them which is awesome. But this way I have my holes to my tags in all the same spot just doing it at once. Then I have some gold and silver cord that um, I have in my stash and I'm just creating little loops from them and putting it through that hole and looping it up. You could also put one end of the string through the loop and then tie it afterwards. Either way works, neither one is right or wrong. But once they are all done, they are ready to use as is. Or what you'll see in a minute is I take a gel pen and I create a line around the outside of some of them just to give them a little bit of extra sparkle and dimension. You can get gel pens in all sorts of different colors and um, finishes. So I'm taking, doing one with a silver gel pen and then I'm gonna do another one with a gold and then the last one I'll do is just a silvery, shimmery gel pen. It ends up not being very visible on the front of the tag, but it's a great way just to add some finish edges to them, if that makes any sense, just to add a little bit of detail. Thank you so much for taking the time during this busy season to join me and watch this. Please hit subscribe, I'd really, really appreciate it. If you have any questions, pop them in the comments below. I really appreciate you being here and taking your spending your time with me. You can see here in this tag how that line just kind of finishes the edges off. Um, it's one of those things that's a personal preference. Some people like it, some people don't. It doesn't need to be perfect, but it is a great way just to add a little bit of extra detail to your project. I hope this has inspired you to use up some of your scraps and some of the little extras that you may have had from your creating for this season. And I hope you have a wonderful new year.